everyone. Welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Are you ready to do another fun block in this Kimberbell's Candy Corn Quilt Shop quilt? I know I am. So let's go ahead and see which one we're going to do today. We are going to do a tombstone block. We're going to do this one here. It's called Here Lies Empty Bobbins. Oh, that's going to be cute. So go ahead and grab your supplies, your plastic bag or pouch system for this block. Here lies empty bobbins and I will meet you over at the machine. We are at the machine and ready to go. Okay, for reference, I have a brother dream machine so you can kind of uh, understand where I am going on the computer screen. Y your machine may be a little bit different but hopefully you know how to add designs onto your machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to do the Here Lies Empty Bobbins block. So we need to load the files onto the machine. So I'm gonna click Embroidery. I'm gonna go to my flash drive. And I have them in a folder called Candy Corn. That's how I labeled it. And now we're gonna load the quilting designs first. So let's go to quilting. Now I have chosen to do one design for the entire project. So if you're doing the bundle that was on Kimberbill.com, no problems, you just need to refer to the Kimberbill chart as to which design you're going to pull up for this particular block, the MT Bobbins. But I'm doing a uh, little this cute little candy corn design on the whole thing. So I don't need to worry about switching designs. Now the trick to this, which I've also mentioned in the other videos, but I need to mention it all the time because it's a very important trick, is the size of quilt design that you're gonna choose on here depends on the finished squared out block size in the Kimberbell instructions. So we are on pages 12 and 13 in the Kimberbell instruction book. And if you look at the top of page 13, it shows you uh, the three tombstone blocks and says the trimming instructions, squared finished blocks. These are going to be four and a half by six and a half. Okay, four and a half by six and a half, which means with seam allowances, we are going to choose the four by six design for these tombstone blocks. Four by six. So again, make sure you look at what the finish size of your block is going to be and then select the quilting design that closely matches that and always go a little bit smaller. So four and a half by six and a half with seam allowances comes down to four by six. Okay, makes sense? You got it. Okay, so now that we've put that in, let's click set. Okay, now we're going to add the applique design on top of this. So we click add. I'm gonna go back to my flash drive and back to my candy corn folder where I put everything. And now I've also labeled my main quilt. I've separated it when I downloaded it. So I put all the quilting designs on one folder and all the main quilt in a main quilt folder. And now we are going to do the empty bobbins. This is the one right here, the tombstone. So we're gonna click this and it looks good. Click set, brings it in right on top. We don't have to do anything and we're gonna click embroidery. Okay, now you can use your five by seven hoop with this. It will just fit because it's four and a half by six and a half. I've chosen to go ahead and for demonstration purposes, use my eight by eight inch hoop because it's a little bit easier to see the entire block stitching out on this, but you can use your five by seven. Just note that when you place your fabric down, when we get ready to uh, do that at that step, your fabric is gonna be on top of the hoop a little bit on the sides, that's not a problem. You just need to make sure you center it so that it still covers that placement line. So you'll be fine. But I'm gonna use for demonstration purposes, the eight by eight. All right, so let's go to the machine. So now I've got my eight by eight hoop in the machine. I've got white bobbin thread down below, and I've gone ahead and put some black thread on the top of the machine. Now, as we go along, this is gonna be the fabric that we're going to be using for the background on this one. So 
I am going to go ahead and put black thread in the top of the machine because I'm going to do the placement stitch for the next couple steps in black. You won't see it. Then the thread will be all ready in the right color when I get to do the quilting on this one. With the black thread already in it, we're going to stitch out the placement line for the batting. And again, you're not going to see the thread. This is going to be hidden inside the block. So it really doesn't matter what color you're using. So I'm just trying to be a little bit efficient and know ahead of time that the black is going to be one that I need for the top of the fabric. So it saves me a step. I don't have to keep switching from white to black, etc. Okay, so let's stitch the placement line for the batting. That looks good. So now we're going to place our batting down and I'm still using scraps from another project. So mine is not exactly cut to size, which is fine. I don't like to waste scraps. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it down, making sure that I've covered the top and the sides mm -hmm. and the bottom. And now we're going to put the foot down and we're going to tack down this batting. Yay! So now let's take this over to the table and we want to cut away, trim away all this excess batting. So we're back at the machine and we have the batting all trimmed up, hoops back on, and now we're going to leave the black thread at the top of the machine and let's stitch out the placement line for the fabric. Okay. So now let's put the fabric down. If you're using the kit, it's going to be this black spiderweb fabric. If you're using your own, you've made your decisions as to what fabric you want for this block. And just make sure that you have all sides covered. Double check. Make sure we're good. We are. And black thread on the top of the machine. Let's go ahead and tack this down. And now the next stitch is going to be the quilting. So this in real time takes about four minutes. So we're going to fast forward through this, but make sure you've got your black thread up at the top of the machine. I chose black because I want it to kind of subdue down in here and I want the spider web still to be what pops. I didn't want to conflict it with white and have to have the quilting conflict with the spider webs. So I'm going to do black so it's a subtle background fabric. So let's stitch this out. Very nice. I actually like that a lot because like I said, it just goes in into the background and the spider webs 
that give you still the overall look. And then if you look real closely, then you see the quilting. I like that a lot. All right, so now we are going to do the headstone placement line. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch to a silver that's going to match, excuse me, a silver thread that's kind of going to match the silver fabric. That'll give me the placement line and then that'll give me the tack down line for this. Okay, so let's switch to a silver thread in the top of your machine. Okay, so silver threads in the top. Let's put the foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the tombstone. This is gonna be cute. Okay, in this fabric, there really is no right side, wrong side. So just pick the side that you'd like to have facing up. Get my threads off. Uh, I think this side's a little bit better. Okay, so now let's go ahead and position the fabric to make sure that you lay it down on top of with enough coverage for that tombstone for the placement line. Check on both sides, and I check on the top, and we are good. Since this is a little smaller piece of fabric, I'm going to use my stylus as my holder. And still silver thread up on top. Let's go ahead and tack down this fabric. You guys got this. It's coming together pretty good, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and take the hoop out of the machine. And now we're going to take this over to the table and I want to trim away this excess fabric. It's starting to get real cute looking. All right, what I also did before I put this hoop back in is I put a new bobbin in my machine because I noticed that it was getting very, very low. And what's going to happen is we're going to be doing about six minutes worth of stitching on the tombstone uh, inscription here. And then we're going to be doing satin stitches around the edge. And I really don't want to run out of bobbin thread in either one of those two places because then it's going to involve taking a little bit of stitching out, going backwards in stitches and redo it because I'm not going to have enough bobbin thread to get through it. So I went ahead and put that aside. We'll use that up for something else small. And I put a brand new bobbin in the bottom and we're going to then have plenty to get through the next two steps. So that is my little tip of the day there for the bobbin. Now it wants to stitch out the tombstone inscription. Here lies empty bobbins. So it's going to be black. So I put black thread in the top of the machine and let's fast forward through this and enjoy it. And let's stitch out. Here lies empty bobbins.
That is really cute. Now I want to show you something here. Uh, we're going to have some jump stitches that we'll have to trim out here and on the bottom. And not a big deal. We'll do that over on the table when we finish up the block. But you're probably wondering in the instructions on page 12 where it says stitch out the heads, headstone tack down line and do not trim fabric. But they want you to stitch this lettering out first. I didn't see there a need for that. If they were doing that based on the idea that the fabric was going to pull I didn't see that as going to be a problem because you've got this double tack down here plus you have this line that it's stitched which is a very heavy stitch so the fabric's not going to pull and as you can tell by doing this everything came out perfectly fine there's no puckering there's no pulling so everything is fine so I'm not quite sure why they wanted you to do that but just so you know you can proceed and do the applique on these tombstones as we normally have which is you trim it after it tacks it down and then you stitch out the details fine or you could do it the way they have it in the instructions either way is fine I just didn't see a need for not doing it as we normally do because it has again this double stitch and then this stitch line here so this fabric isn't going to go anywhere and it came out perfectly fine so we're going to put this back in the hoop now and we're going to stitch out the satin stitching all around the edge of the tombstone and i'm going to do it in the silver that will match the tombstone so let's put silver thread in the top of the machine okay this is in real time a 10 minute stitch out so make sure you've got your silver thread on the top and sit back and relax and let's fast forward through this and stitch out the beautiful satin stitch around the tombstone love satin stitches i know i've said that before but i do Isn't that cute? Like I said, Kimberbell comes up with some of the cutest designs. I love it. All right, let's take this over to the table and let's finish up this block. All right, look at that. You guys did it. Doesn't that look cool? That looks so cool. All right, so let's take care of the jump stitches first. Use a good curved pair of scissors. Again, these are Havel scissors that have the curve going that way. Get them on Amazon. They're really good for doing the applique and for trimming because they're curved. You can get right up against that thread and trim it nice and close. Okay, and there's one more up here between the word here and lies. Let's get that done. Oh, and then I forgot about the ones with the bobbins. 
These are a little tight, but you can get them as well. Just do one at a time. And just get them as close as you can. There you go. Sometimes you have to try to poke it up to get the thread to go straight up to get a hold of it. Because sometimes it says, no, I don't want to be trimmed. And you say, yes, you will. There we go. And do the next one. So you guys having fun? Isn't this just a really cute project? And it's It becomes so exciting as you go through it because you get to see more and more blocks and you actually get to see it come to life. And that's what I love so much about it is that you literally are creating your own little masterpiece. And I think that is super cool. Okay, we've only got a couple more here. And then we'll be done with the jump stitches. And one more here. That one's a little fuzzy. So let's try to tame it. There we go. There. That looks good except this little guy. Right there. Okay. Now we're talking. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this out of the hoop. Put this little guy to one side. Okay, so now we're ready to trim this up. It's a little bit harder to see on this block, but if you look closely, you see this outside stitch line. This outside line, which was the tack down for the fabric, is now what we're going to use to score up our block. If you have these Kimberbell orange pop rulers, you're looking for the one that says cut size four and a half inches by six and a half inches, and it's the rectangle. They make two sets of these. They make a square set and they make a rectangle set. And it is an investment, but if you can manage to do these rulers, they're worthwhile in the long run because the more Kimball projects you do, the more you're going to use these rulers and the easier your life will become. It even has these little sticky grips which help keep it in place when you, when you uh, put it on top of the fabric. So basically all you got to do if you have these rulers is take that outer stitch line and line the ruler up so it is on all four sides of that stitch line. It's kind of hard to see with a darker fabric, but I basically just put a picture frame around that stitch line. And now we're going to trim it up. Okay, reposition it. Got it. With this rotating mat, it makes your life also a little bit easier because what we're going to do is just turn it. We're not going to turn the block. We're going to turn the mat to make the cuts. So put your fingers down. I'm going to put the blade into this notch and we're going to keep the blade up against the side of the ruler. I'm right handed. If you're left handed, you're going to tilt it this way and you're going to put it this direction. Okay. So I'm right handed. So I'm going to do it this direction. Again, if it moves, not a problem. Just line her back up. Put the blade in the notch, go nice and slow. We don't want to lose a finger. Nice and slow. Turn the mat, put it down in the notch, nice and slow. Same thing. Put it down in the notch, nice and slow. And one more cut. Again, keep the fingers out of the way. There we go. Let's see how it came out. All right, there we go. Put that to one side. And look, you have your adorable little block. Isn't that cute? I love it. So then, if we put that together, with the other blocks that we have finished so far in this series. Look at you. Look at what you've done. You guys, 
are rocking it. You've done such a good job. I hope you have had a fun time with this block. This is going to be a really cute project. Just can't wait. Okay, so please like this video if you like it. YouTube likes to see if people like the videos. And please subscribe to my channel. That is the best way that you can help support me so I can do what I do for you is please subscribe to my channel. And then also click the, mail, the bell notifications when you do subscribe. That way you're notified every time I upload a video on this series or any other project, you'll be notified right away and be one of the first ones to see the video. So I hope you had fun today. Stay tuned and come back to see the next block here on Jolly Molly TV. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.